there's a new academic journal that's been causing quite a stir, the aptly named Journal of Controversial Ideas. The journal aims to showcase high-quality work defending views that are controversial, if not outright unpopular. Largely for this reason, the journal takes the unusual step of letting authors publish under a pseudonym. Now, the very existence of the Journal of Controversial Ideas has attracted criticism from some circles. I won't get into the specifics of that debate now, but I will say that for my part, I think the journal is a great idea, and I'm hopeful that it'll facilitate lots of new and interesting work. In this video series, I'll be engaging with the journal by providing commentary on its articles that I found interesting. The first such article is by Rivka Weinberg and is titled, Ultimate Meaning, We Don't Have It, We Can't Get It, and We Should Be Very, Very Sad. Now to follow up on this blunt title, Weinberg begins her abstract in a way that's even more direct. She comes right out and says, life is pointless, that's not okay, I show that. Quick clarification here, when Weinberg says that life is pointless, she does not mean that everything you do in life has no point. She acknowledges that particular projects and actions can still have a point. These would include things like helping your family, advancing in your career, pursuing your hobbies. Weinberg would happily agree that all of these endeavors have value or are worth doing or have a point, whichever way you prefer of putting it. And the term that Weinberg uses to refer to this kind of a point or to this kind of meaning that our actions can have is everyday meaning. So her claim is certainly not that we lack everyday meaning. What Weinberg does claim is that the enterprise of living your life as a whole lacks a point. In other words, if you were to ask what the meaning is not simply of a particular project or endeavor of yours, but of your life in its entirety, Weinberg would say that there's nothing there to be found. And she calls this ultimate meaning, the kind of meaning that applies or that would apply to a life in its entirety. Weinberg's claim in this article is that there simply is no such thing as ultimate meaning. To see why Weinberg thinks this, first we'll need to ask ourselves what it is for something to have a point. Here's how Weinberg puts it. A point is a valued end. An enterprise or effort has a point, or is purposeful, if we have justified reason to do it because of its valued end. For example, consider the activity of building a hut. To the extent that building a hut has a point, the point would be shelter. After all, presumably the whole reason you're building a hut is so that it'll provide shelter for you or others. Accordingly, shelter is the valued end of your building a hut. And it's this that makes shelter the point of building a hut. Now Weinberg's next claim is that the point of an enterprise is always external to the enterprise itself. Consider again, for example, the activity of building a hut. The point of building a hut is the shelter the hut provides, and the shelter the hut provides is external to the activity of building the hut itself. Similarly, the point of exercise would presumably be to maintain one's health or to look good or something like that. These are external to the activity of exercising. Even when it comes to an activity like playing with your children, Weinberg claims that the point is external. For instance, the point of playing with your children would presumably be something like having fun or developing closeness, and these would be external to the play itself. And so, since the point of an enterprise must lie outside the enterprise itself, it follows, or is at least supposed to follow, that your life does not have a point. After all, any point you tried to give your life would have to already be contained within your life. For some examples, consider truth, justice, or love. Weinberg's thought is that your efforts to promote these things would necessarily occur within your life, which shows that they couldn't be the point of your life. As Weinberg says, there's nothing external to your life to serve as the point of leading and living it, because your life includes your whole damn life. Human life includes its entirety, leaving nowhere for us to reach for a valued end to serve as a point for leading and living it. While I find this an interesting argument, I'd now like to raise an objection. It seems to me that there is an ambiguity at the heart of this argument, particularly in phrases like, your life encompasses all that you value in it. 
Now, in one sense, your values are necessarily encompassed within your life. Namely, any value you appeal to as giving a point to your life, whether it's a value like knowledge, beauty, or anything else, will be something that you yourself value. Valuing that thing through your beliefs and feelings about it will be a part or aspect of your life. We might call these values in the psychological sense, given that they're a matter of your beliefs and feelings about what you value. However, there's another sense in which we might speak of values, a sense in which, as it turns out, your values need not be encompassed within your life. This is the sense in which we use the word values not to refer to your beliefs or feelings, but to refer to the things themselves that you value. For instance, if the two things you value most are beauty and justice, then we could speak of your values as referring to beauty and justice themselves, and not simply to your own beliefs or feelings about beauty and justice. We might refer to these as values in the metaphysical sense, and it turns out that values in the metaphysical sense need not be encompassed within your own life. For example, suppose that the point you've picked for your life is to inspire others. Certainly part of the inspiration of others could be encompassed within your life, that is, it could occur while you're still alive. But suppose that you want your life to be an inspiration to others even after you're dead, and that you're successful in this. After your death, people do in fact continue to be inspired by your life. That's something that is not encompassed within your life, since your life is already over, yet it plausibly provides at least some of the point to your life. As this example suggests, it's values in the metaphysical sense, not the psychological sense that provide a point to our efforts. To take another case, consider again the example of building a hut. Clearly the point of building a hut is the shelter it provides, not your beliefs or feelings about that shelter. And so, since values in the metaphysical sense are what provide a point to our efforts, and since values in the metaphysical sense can be external to your life, Weinberg's argument is undermined. That is, even if, as Weinberg says, the point of an enterprise must lie external to the enterprise itself, your life could still have a point. In particular, the point of your life could be some value or set of values in the metaphysical sense. And all the classic examples of things that might provide a point to life, things like making others happy, ensuring a better life for your children, creating beautiful art, and so on, all these would count as values in the metaphysical sense. So it seems to me that the prospects for giving your life a point are quite positive. There's of course more that could be said about Weinberg's argument, but here I'll close by bringing up just one further feature of it, a feature that I quite liked. Weinberg suggests that if indeed, as she says, life is pointless, it would make perfect sense to be sad about that. And I think that she's exactly right in this. Sometimes other philosophers will say things like, if your life is pointless, then it doesn't matter that your life is pointless, so you have no reason to be sad about it. And that's always struck me as facile. Even though I disagree with Weinberg's conclusion that life is pointless, I admire that she's willing to acknowledge that this is in fact a sad view, rather than trying to explain the bleakness away. That's all for today. If you have thoughts that you'd like to share, please feel free to do so in the comments. And stay tuned for more videos about controversial ideas in philosophy.